All right, good morning, everybody. It is just after 11 o'clock on this 9th of August. It feels like we just started the eighth month of 2022. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Artists and Authors, brought to you by CentralValleyTalk.com. I'm Austin Reed, coming to you from our Tower District studios inside the Mike Briggs building. We thank you for joining us. Connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on air. Make sure that you subscribe as well to our Central Valley Talk YouTube channel so you can see more great interviews like you're going to see here in the next 10 minutes. My guest today is an author and self taught medium. That's right. D.L. Benning became spiritually curious after her father's murder in 1984. It would take 25 years for her father to start a conversation with her. Since then, D.L. has sought out education and guidance to enhance her gift. Uh, she credits many teachers and kind souls from the other side for guiding her along the way. And you see her right there next to me. DL, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on Artists and Authors. Oh, thank you for having me. Hello from Chicago. Hi there. Oh, Chicago. That's very cool. I didn't know, you know, I didn't ask beforehand where, where exactly your location was. My mom uh, is from the Chicago area, had a hot okay. dog stand uh, in the, the sub, one of the suburbs. I always forget the name, but anyways, I well, love you should remember this. I, I know. Mama. I, and I talk about it all the time. Oak Park, <laughs> Oak Park. Oak Park. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> well, hello to your mama. Thank you. Yeah. I love Chicago. Love Chicago. So, um, so DL, fascinating story um i by the way uh just some background i am obsessed with the other side a uh, big paranormal fan big uh spiritual kind of person so when, when I, I i saw this come my way this morning that i was interviewing you i got really really uh excited so um for for our viewers that don't know what a medium again medium is tell us okay so a medium is someone that bridges the two worlds. So um, think of it as a bridge, mm -hmm. like from from this plane to the next plane. So I raise my vibration to communicate with souls on the other side and communicate messages back and forth. So you let's see, let's go back to um, the day that you maybe the or just the first few days that you really noticed that you had this gift? Well, it was a little scary and I did think I was going crazy because <laughs> they were voices in my head. It was my, it was a voice in my head, but it was my father's voice. And it kind of just happened. I was just uh, getting ready to get married and I was alone in my condo and I was kind of having a little pity party because my dad had passed and I didn't have him to walk me down the aisle, and I had been just obsessed with that as a kid, which, hmm. of course, an adult to a seven-year-old about getting married, it, well, you have daughters, so you know, right? Yeah. There's things that come up, and you go, oh, yeah, right. And so I was realizing that in a few months, he wouldn't be there, and I was really upset, and I was really in the midst of poor me, and I just heard his voice, and he said, of course I'll be there. And I was just like, Okay, who is that? And I was looking around and blinking because I thought, well, nobody's here. And I was curious and I've seen psychics and mediums myself, but I didn't realize that I also had the gift, which we all do. It's whether we're in tune to it or not and how in tune we are. And so we just had a conversation and it filled in a lot of gaps. And I think when I use that medium gift with people, I think they're just looking for answers and I think they they're a little, you know, is this real or not? But I couldn't possibly know the things that the information that have come through. And I couldn't possibly have even known my father's side because, he, you know, he was gone when I was 21 and out of my life for most of it. So, you know, just hearing from him, his story was just really interesting to me. And because it was my father, I probably believed it more. But I did kind of wonder like am I going crazy <laughs> and then you know they say when the students ready the teachers show up and mm. people were just coming in into my way through different avenues and different books I was reading and I just found my people so to speak that helped me really develop this gift even further you know we've heard the terms obviously medium but also clairvoyance 
and psychic. Those, you know, so between those three, what, what, what's the difference, uh, would you say? Well, that's a good question because I think the terms get intermixed. Um, a psychic is somebody who's reading energy, could be from the past, could be present or future, but they're not talking to the other side. And a clairvoyant is a real strong energy that is uh, the gift of sight. Like um, there's people that can see angels and um, guides and different energies, like like they were real people right mm -hmm. here. I don't have that gift. I can see them when I close my eyes. So everything is happening internally for me. And so a medium, mediums are always psychic, but psychics aren't obviously always medium. Uh, so interesting. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about um, why and how you began channeling the messages kind of from the other side. Well, they just kind of started seeking me out okay. um, with different messages for me. So at first, it was my people and my angels coming to me, deceased grandparents, deceased friends, and started filling in some gaps. And then I just started practicing and sought out a teacher that just helped me learn um, the guidelines, so to speak, on how to do it, you know, in, the, in people's best and highest good. And then I started doing readings for family and friends. So that was kind of fun. And they were, of course, good um, volunteers. And then I started getting outside of that for their family and friends. And so, you know, I don't advertise for it, but people seem to find me and... <laughs> Probably the last five years, I've seen a lot of mothers whose children have committed suicide. And so for me, it's all about connecting and helping people heal um, because that would be such a huge loss and teaching them how to keep the conversation going. So I also think, you know, I'm a teacher by degree, but I do a lot of teaching in life. Yeah. Um, and so I'm teaching them a little bit of the basics so they can continue on conversation because it truly is you know a very thin veil between the the two worlds so to speak dl i gotta ask you do you have any favorite stories of of you working with um with a client uh on, on a situation i mean you said that you've been working with a lot of women uh going through the grief process uh losing their 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 uh, son or daughter um, but do, do you ha anything that really comes to mind, just maybe even within the last year or, you know, whatever? Well, I think that there, um, you know, all their stories would be confidential, so I won't say any names. But sure. there was one mother that came and, you know, it's not unusual that someone whose child had committed suicide would somehow feel an enormous amount of guilt, like they should have known, um, they should have stopped it. You know, the person died alone. And so I believe that we're all here for a soul's purpose. And we're here to learn lessons of being a human. And when our lessons are up, it's we're done. And we travel in these soul groups. And so we agree to help each other with each other's lessons. And so, you know, I just really feel the heart healing a bit with the moms that have come through. Mm -hmm. And, you know of their children saying they're fine, they're on the other side, they've connected with other loved ones who have passed. And I think there's just a piece that comes with that. It doesn't replace, obviously, but I think when I'm able to do that, I feel it too. Like I feel this gratitude to be a part of that. You know, I've always been a, a bridge builder, a collaborator. And so, you know, the universe is just using my skills in different ways now. Um, okay, I want to talk a little bit about about the book. Let's uh, okay. let's dive into that. Sure. When did you? When did this all come about? <laughs> well, it started five years ago. Okay. And the story found me, so to speak. Uh, and it is a fictional book, but let's just say the main character, Lynn Monroe, and I have a lot in common. Hmm. And so um, this was just some. Thing totally unexpected never you know a lot of people ask well did you always dream of writing a book and mm -hmm. of course the answer is no <laughs> heck no right. i dropped out of high school english because i didn't want to write a term paper <laughs> so i'm the least likeliest person to have ever written a book ever 
and the story found me and I'm all about shining the light on the truth and I just knew I was being called in a different way to bring this story to life. So um, this book is a work of fiction, but uh, like, like you said, there's a lot of your main character, Lynn. Um, can, can you share how much of this really happened to you, just more of like that, that connection? Well, I am able to connect with different souls and get their stories and pass on messages mm -hmm. if they've chosen me to do that. So I have to be respectful of it. It's an open investigation, so I can't say too much, but I'll just say Lynn and I have a lot in common. Okay, um, The Ford Heights Murders is book one in a series. How many books are in the series, and then when can we expect the next one? So there'll be three books. Okay. Book two is underway, so we should see that sometime in the fall. Perfect, very good. And then people can learn more, of course, on your website. Tell everybody what that is. Yourfriendscamesteame.com. Awesome. DL, uh, great conversation. Great to meet you. We've got uh, about 30 seconds left. Any parting words? Anything you wanted to say that I missed? Don't want to uh, miss that. <laughs> uh, you know, I think you did a, gr a great job. You know, I think people are curious. I think we're in a time in the in the consciousness that um, people are, are more curious and more open. And I think um, it's exciting to, to see the world that is becoming. And so I'm excited and I hope that um, if you enjoyed the interview that you'll check out my website and you can buy the book on Amazon and get it in Kindle or uh, paperback. I will be checking out your website as well. D.L. Benning, thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Austin Reed. You're watching artists and authors from CentralValleyTalk.com. If you want to be a guest, connect with us online. We'll be right back.